What's up YouTube, it's your boy Jerome and I'm here today with the review for Marriage to Medicine. This is season six, episode number eight, and it's titled Pajama, Pajama Drama. So without further ado, let's get this video started. All right, so the episode starts out with Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone. They're at Dr. Jackie's office and they are talking about the events that happened at Dr. Jared's housewarming party. I did agree with them when they said that Mariah was the one who shut the shit down between Quad because Quad was in there having a conversation about what the girls wanted to talk about and the topic of conversation happened to be Quad. So if she's in there talking about herself, that's because the girls want to know what's going on with her. Now I do agree with what Mariah was saying and I got where Mariah was coming from, but wrong place, wrong time for that whole conversation to even take place. So I agree with Jackie and Simone. So then Dr. Jackie asked Simone, you know, what's going on between you and Cecil right now? And Dr. Simone says that she and Cecil have had sex and how she was talking about how she didn't think like she would be wet and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, oh God, I didn't want to hear that from Dr. Simone. Like, oh God, please turn the channel. But, you know, I'm glad that Dr. Simone and Cecil are finally having sex because that's really what Cecil, aside from their marriage, that is what Cecil wanted, was just the intimacy with Simone but Simone was closed off and couldn't give it to him now. And I'm like, that's your husband. Like, he's going to eventually stray if you don't eventually give him what he wants. So I'm happy that she did that. And Jackie is talking about, you know, when they were at the housewoman party, they had, she suggested that the girls have a pajama party. So looks like all the girls will be in attendance of this pajama party. That is, well, including Quad herself. Like, go, okay, we've saw quite a, quite a few events here lately. Look at you, Quad, trying to show up and show out. I did also forget to mention that when Dr. Um, Jackie and Simone were talking about Quad, you know, they're talking about how with Quad, they want to be there to support Quad, which I definitely get that. I don't know why Quad feels like the girls are judgmental toward her because if I'm not mistaken, didn't Quad have so much shit to say? And I tweeted this, Quad has so much shit to say about Lisa Nicole's marriage but now that the tables have turned, the cards have flipped, you know, everything like that. She wants to be mom's the motherfucking word and don't want to open up, which I get it is her prerogative. If she doesn't want to open up, that's on her. But don't do this. Don't do, you know, come at another woman about her marriage. But then when your marriage starts to crumble, you don't want to have anything to say about it. Like, I think that is very fucking hypocritical. If you want me to be honest with you, I think it's hypocritical. But Jackie is like, you know. When it comes to Quad, they want to be there to support her. You know, if she doesn't want a divorce, they don't want her to get a divorce. But if she does go that route of divorce, they just want to be there to be on her side. They not well, actually, they're not picking sides. They just want to be there to support she and Greg, which I understand that. But I guess Quad wants to play the victim role this whole season. We'll see. Because I'm kind of over it at this point. All right, so now I have Dr. Contessa. Dr. Contessa is still recovering from her surgery that she had. And, you know, she's talking about how the kids come in and out of the room. And I'm like, shit, it's just that simple. Tell them, go the fuck away. You have to say it that way, but just like, go away. If mommy's eyes are closed and mommy's sleep, go to daddy. Daddy is fine. There's nothing wrong with daddy. Mommy was in the hospital. Mommy had surgery done. Daddy didn't have no surgery. Go bother daddy. You know, ask daddy to do this, do that. And I get it. The kids are worried about her and want to check up on her. But like I said, if mommy got her eyes closed, mommy is not feeling good and mommy is asleep. So you need to go the hell away. Hell, you can also lock your dough. Like you can lock your dough, put a do not disturb sign on your dough. Do whatever you got to do to tell the kids, just leave me the hell alone. So, you know, Dr. Scott comes into the room and she's talking about how she's in pain. And he's asking if she's taking her medicine. And she says, no, she's not really taking her medicine. I'm like, bullshit. You know, if you give me, if I'm in any kind of little bit, well, you know, I've been in some pain and not a lot of pain. And I just don't take the medicine. Like when I have my wisdom teeth removed, they gave me so many pain pills. One that I had to take because, you know, it was just a little bit of pain in my mouth. And then the, the antibiotics, which I really didn't want to take that. But I'm like, the bitch said I got to take it. So I got to take it. So... And I actually still have some pills left that I didn't take. But, you know, I get it. And, he, you know, Dr. Scott's talking about doctors are the worst patients. Doctors and nurses are the worst patients that you could ever give because they know so much. But then when you tell them what to do, they don't want to really listen to that and receptive to that. 
But, you know, like I said, she's on the men's and hopefully she's going to get better because she hasn't really been to any of the events since the surgery. So I'm hoping Dr. Contessa gets better and get on her feet soon. All right, so next we have Mariah. And I'm actually watching Watch What Happens Live as I'm recording this video. And I'm looking at Mariah's face. And I'm like, what is up with her face? Is it her makeup? Did she have some work done on her face? I can't really quite tell. She did, you know, Andy did play the clip for her last week when annoying ass Kwa was on there with a super annoying ass Tamar Braxton. And, you know, uh, Kwa said that she's ready to see Mariah at the reunion. And Mariah says she ain't got she ain't got to be ready to see me. Like she can see me anytime. But we also haven't been friends in five years, so she ain't got shit to say to me. And you know, only thing she can say to me is hi, bye, thank you, and pleasing. And so now we're gonna go into the episode with Mariah. So Mariah's at her house, she's cooking breakfast, and Dr. Aiden comes down and he's getting ready to go to work. But I guess he was early, you know, getting ready early because she was kind of surprised about him getting ready. But he's talking about how he has to go down there to basically see if he still has a job because the hospital that he works for they're taken over by another corporate their the corporation the corporation that he works for they're merging with another another one so he's not 100 percent sure if he still has a job and then mariah was like well what does that mean for our family and she says well do we have options he says yes we have options we can stay here in atlanta we can go to california we can go to houston and they can go to north carolina and when, they, when he said California, because I know that they are doing a marriage to medicine in L.A. So I was like, is this going to be a segue for these two to go to L.A.? And then also marriage to medicine Houston. They never officially canceled marriage to medicine Houston. So I don't know what's going on with that one either. Because Bravo never officially canceled that show. They just never brought it back. Which it was actually, I actually did like marriage to medicine Houston. I just hated the fact that they put it on Friday nights because... I wouldn't be at home on Friday nights and I would actually forget to record Marriage to Medicine Houston and the original Marriage to Medicine, which speaking of Friday nights, we all know that Real Housewives of Atlanta will be back on November 4th and Marriage to Medicine is still going to be airing when the Real Housewives of Atlanta come on. So I'm wondering if Bravo is going to move Marriage to Medicine back to Friday nights since 7 o'clock well, what, 7 o'clock in Dallas is the time that Bravo show, 7 o'clock in Texas is the time that Bravo shows the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So I'm wondering if they're going to move Real Housewives of Atlanta earlier and then move Married to Medicine to Friday. Or are they going to put Real Housewives of Atlanta on first and then Married to Medicine after that? I hope they do it in that sequence. I hope they probably do like, I know they're not going to do Married to Medicine first, then followed by Real Housewives of Atlanta. I just know that Bravo is not going to do that. I think Real Housewives of Atlanta will be a lead in for Married to Medicine if they don't move Married to Medicine back to Friday nights. And I pray to God that Bravo does not do that. But back to the show. Mariah, you know, she is just apprehensive about what's going on because she She's, she loves Georgia. She, does, she loves Atlanta. She doesn't want to move. She said there's nothing wrong with California and all that. She's not, there's nothing wrong with California, Houston, and all that. Uh, okay, so somebody in my comments on my uh, How to Get Away with Murder review, they asked me to please stop saying and all that kind of stuff. So if you guys see me get frustrated with that, it's me trying to minimize saying that because I didn't realize that it was something that I did. So I am trying. Thank you to who, thank you to that subscriber who told me that. I really did appreciate it. You know, I did comment on it. I don't know if you thought I was being a, a ass or sarcastic. I really did take that in as you being giving me constructive criticism. So I do appreciate you for that. So I didn't want you to feel like I was being funny in any type of way. I really truly did 100% appreciate you giving me that feedback. I like feedback. If there's something that you know you see me doing on camera that you don't like, point it out to me. Like. I'm an easy person to tell, hey, you do this too much and I don't like that. It's all about how you say things to me. If you come at me with a, a negative way, in a negative way, then of course I might respond to you in a negative way or I might not respond to you at all. But if I can genuinely tell that you are just trying to help me out with everything, I would, you know, I'll be like, okay, I got it committed to memory and I'll try to stop. So again, I really do appreciate you for telling me that because I, like I said, I didn't realize I said it as much as I do because I did a video yesterday that I didn't post 
And I kept saying it the whole time. I'm like, fuck, I just kept stopping and recording. And I've actually done it with this video tonight. I've stopped and recorded because I've said that phrase, I've said that thing so many times that I'm like, I don't feel like editing it out. So I just stopped it and re-recorded it. But once again, thank you so much for that constructive criticism. I did appreciate it. All right, so then we got Dr. Heavenly. She is meeting with her anger management counselor. So, you know, he wants to know about her trip to Miami and she tells him about her trip. Then she mentions how when she went to her sister's bedroom that that brought up the memories that, you know, her father was died in that room. And he asked her, well, she says she forgot about that. She kind of put that out of her mind because it's been 30 years or so. And he asked her, did she cry? She said, I might have cried at the funeral, but she also says that her dad wasn't around. Well, she said that last, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, that she said he was in the military and that her mom just chose not to go with her husband. And then she's talking about how her mom, when they were, when she was a kid, her mom worked a shift from three to 11. So three o'clock when she got out of school to 11 o'clock at night, she didn't really see her mother. Actually, she probably didn't see her mom at all until probably the next morning when she got ready for school. And you know, the counselor's talking about she was working during those pivotal times in her life, which she had to support her family, but God, I can imagine working those hours. At one point in my mom, in my life, my mom did work some late night hours, but that was as I got older, because when I was younger, she worked shifts in the morning, so that way she would take me to school, and by the time she got, by the time I got out of school, she would pick me up. But then she did have one where she worked, she had to work during the day, and she didn't get home until late at night, in which I only saw her when we got home, but we still had managed to have time with each other, eat, and, you know, talk. But again, that's like when I got a little bit old. That's when I got to double-digit age. And, um, yeah, I think I was double-digit ages at that point when she would work from 9 to 9 at night, which I really did hate that. But, I, you know, looking back on it, I understand why my mom did it. She wanted to provide for me. But I spent time with my grandmother, who I love so much. I love my mom and my grandmother. But Heavenly is then talking about Mariah again. And I don't think Heavenly has an issue. I know she has an issue with Mariah. I'm not going to say that. But I think more so her issue is she can look at Mariah and draw parallels between her sister and Mariah. So that's her biggest issue with Mariah is that she can draw parallels between her sister and Mariah. And the thing is, she distanced herself from her sister, but with this with this group of girls, she can't really distance herself from Mariah because number one, they're filming a television show, television show, so she just can't really distance herself too much from Mariah. All right, so we got Quad. She is moving into her new house. She has her mom and her aunt there. She's talking about how things are difficult between her and Gregory, and she says that the night that she moved out and after she filed for divorce. She told Gregory it's best that they don't talk to each other, which, okay, I guess if you say so. You know, for me, looking at Quad from season one up until now, I have never really thought that Quad was 100% into Gregory. Some people did, but I did not believe that Quad was ever 100% into him. I'm not going to say she didn't love him, but I just never felt like there was much of an attraction and stuff there between those two. So, you know, Quad can say what she got to say. Like I said earlier, I think it's the pot calling the kettle black. You know, you talked about Lisa Nicole's marriage to Dr. Uh, Darren. And now look at your marriage falling apart, but you don't want to have anything to say about it. And mostly you want to put the blame on Gregory. It's like Greg is, I mean, Greg is not perfect and he didn't do the right things in your marriage. But it takes two to tango. And I'm not saying that Greg, like I said, I'm not saying that Greg was right with what he did. But. Like. You have to take, and Dr. Simone and both Dr. Jackie said that, Quad has to be able to take accountability for what she did in the marriage because you cannot put it all on Dr. Gregory because he's not solely at fault. There are two people in the marriage, so both of them have equal fault. And when it comes to Quad, the thing that was the driving force between Quad and Dr. Gregory, I really believe it was the whole aspect of having kids through and through. That was it, the kids, and I don't think that she was attracted to him one bit. So then her mama, while they're talking, she's talking about the divorce. Her mom starts to cry, 
And basically her mom says that she was in a difficult marriage at one point and that's just not what she wanted for Quad. Cause Quad was like, don't cry. I'm like, please don't cry lady. Cause I, I mean, whatever, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so now we're gonna move over to, oh God, Toya, Toya, Toya. Oh <laughs> God, Toya got on my nerves this whole episode. So she and Dr. Eugene are at their house She's trolling over and strolling through Instagram and she sees a um, an article on the internet and it is about Quad's divorce. I'm like, oh, here we go with Toya and his bullshit. And then you also have Simone and Cecil. They found, you know, Simone found it as well and she tells Cecil. So, you know, Toya, Toya got in her feelings because Quad did not let her know that she's moved out the house and she filed for divorce. And I love the fact that Eugene told her, well, maybe y'all are not friends. Y'all are just acquaintances. Boom, Toya. Your husband just sat there and told you. But my thing with Toya is, please get a job, get a hobby, get something to do. Learn how to knit. Learn how to um, crochet. Learn how to cook better. Learn how to mow the lawn. Learn how to do something that occupies your fucking time. So that you don't feel so entitled to know what's going on in other people's lives. Like, I get it. You think you are, quote, friends, but your friends do not have to tell you every single thing that is going on in their lives. Like, why does Toya feel like she needs to know everything that's going on in Simone's life, Quad's life, Contessa's life? Like, I don't get Quad. I mean, I don't get Toya. Like I said, Toya needs to get a hobby. She needs to learn how to do something. She needs to learn a trade. She needs to do something because her time is too freely, too loose. Because you got time to worry about other bitches' business instead of worrying about your own business. And I don't mean to call them bitches, but that's just what I was thinking. You got too much time on your hand to sit here and worry about what other people are doing. Like, when you know that you, when you sit there and can literally think to yourself, damn, why didn't Toya tell me, why didn't Quad tell me this? Why didn't Contessa tell me this? It, that would be the point in my life where I'd be like, you know what, Lord, you telling me something because why am I worried about what these people are doing? Like, what's going on in my life that I need to I need to worry about what's going on in my life and not theirs? Like, she gets on my nerves with that bullshit. And then, you know, Eugene just basically told Toya, wait and let Quad open up to you. Don't go to her guns blazing trying to figure out what's going on in her life. Let her come to you. Toya works my last nerve when it comes to her. She's childish as hell, too. All right, so lastly, we are at Dr. Jackie's slumber party. You know, she has all the girls there. What it is, she wants to just bring all the girls back. And I'm like, bring them back to what? Yeah, because y'all arguing bicker, bicker with each other. But if you want to get make the arguing and bickering a little less, whatever. So Heavenly and Simone show up. And heavily ask about Quad, how she is. And Jackie says that, you know, she's struggling right now. And then Heavily's like, well, should we ask her questions about it? And Jackie says, do not do that. But Simone is like, well, you know, we just want to know if she's okay. And Heavily's like, I don't know if I can be quiet. And I'm like, I don't know if you can be quiet either, but I hope you do be quiet. And like I said earlier, I get it. I get why Quad, I mean, I get it. Quad doesn't have to tell them anything about her marriage, that's fine. But don't be a hypocrite when you, like I said, you came after Lisa Nicole's marriage, but now that yours is unraveling and crumbling, you don't want anybody to bring anything up about it. Like, I think that's hypocritical, the pot calling the kettle black, all that kind of stuff. Like, sorry about that. But I just think that's hypocritical as fuck. Like, how are you gonna sit here and criticize this girl about her marriage years ago but now that yours is unraveling and crumbling, you don't want nobody to bring that shit up. I think it's bullshit, if you want me to be honest with you. And like I, like I keep saying, I'm over Quad and it's pity. I think it's just a pity party for Quad. Because I don't think she's as hurt as she says she is about her marriage. I think, to an extent, Quad wanted it out of her marriage. That's just how I feel. I don't know how anybody else feels. So then, you know, Mariah shows up. She's talking to the girls. She goes to sit down by Jackie and Heavenly walks by. Heavenly doesn't speak to um, Mariah until Jackie says something, but she says hi to Mariah. And then, you know, Toya shows up, Dr. Jared shows up, and then lastly, Quad gets there. 
again, like I said, Quad is full of shit. Because Quad is talking about how she feels like the girls are ganging up on her, coming at her, talking about the crawfish broil and all, and the um, she's talking about the crawfish broil, and she's talking about this um, Dr. Jerry's housewoman party. I get it. The, now at the crawfish boil, I didn't think the the girls did anything wrong to you. Like that was all you. Now at Dr. Jerry's house, that Mariah was wrong from what she did, but at the crawfish broil. I don't think that the girls were wrong at all. She's talking about the girls came up her ass and all, and you know stuff like that. No, they did not. You were the one that did that shit. So then, as she gets in there, everybody, you know, Jackie says that Contessa may come, and then heavily ask how quiet is, and quiet says that she is in a difficult spot right now. You know, she's dealing basically. And then she says how she doesn't want to talk about anything, which understandable. You just filed for divorce. That's understandable. You haven't got your thoughts together. So I didn't expect her to open up 100% at that point. But, you know, Heavenly is like, this is a judgment free zone. Well, actually, Mariah said it's a judgment free zone. And Heavenly said, you know, this is free for you to, this is an open floor for you to talk about whatever. She says, but I don't want to talk. And when she said that she didn't want to talk, they should have just said, you know what, Quad, I respect that. You don't want to talk. You could have said, it is an open floor. If you do want to talk, that's up to you. But if you don't want to talk, I completely understand it and I completely respect that. That was all that had to be said. Nothing else had to be said. So then they call Contessa and Contessa says that she's not coming. And then Toya got this thank ass look on her face. And I'm like, Toya, why is your face all scrunched up and frowned up? Like, if you have an issue with Contessa's like why should it bother you if she comes or not come at all i don't understand toya she is irritating as fuck like what the fuck so then they start to play the game to see so they play a game they pull names out of a hat and the person that they pull they have to you know imitate the person basically what they think of the person so we got simone she pulled heavenly out the hat mariah she was contessa we got Heavenly, she pulled Toya. Toya got in her feelings about that and then, you know, start to adjust uh, Heavenly's titties and her ass. And I'm like, I'm like, Toya, if that's what Heavenly thinks about you, shit, that's what she thinks about you. You can't change what the bitch thinks about you. Like, whatever, Toya. So then Jackie is Quad. Toya was Simone. Did Quad get up and do somebody? I, I wasn't even paying attention. So then Jackie has another game for the women. So basically what it is, she had all the women text her a question and they all pull from the hat. But the only person that pulled from the hat was actually Jackie. And the question that Jackie had was, what point do you know to cut her friend off? And she gave her explanation about when you know to cut her friend off. Why did she have to pull that from the hat? So heavily... I didn't, I, went, I didn't take any problem to what Heavenly said because Heavenly said, meant, you know, talking about being good friends, she asked Quad, do you think we've been good friends to you? And saying, you know, it's, a, it's good to talk about it. And Quad says she will talk about things in her own time. And I, like I said, I, I, I get where Quad is coming from. In her own time, she has to feel like she's ready to talk to the girls. I just do find it a little bit odd that you find it easy to talk to the sister circle live girls as opposed to these girls but i'm not gonna go there anymore i'm gonna leave that alone but basically heavenly was like you know we just want to make sure that you're okay and she says like i said she says that she's dealing and then toya's like well i got a question for you she's like toya i'm not entertaining your question and then toya gets in her feelings about that she's like well she got to ask a question she got to ask a question she got to do this she got to do that i'm like toya shut up like why like it's just, it's something called mind your business, please. And then, you know, they get worked up. They start to argue with each other. And Quad tells Toya she talks too much and that she runs her mouth, which is 100% true. Like, Toya has no other business besides these other women's business, to be honest with you. Like, Toya works my fucking nerves each episode. She makes my ass hurt and my head hurt. My every she makes everything hurt really and truly to be honest with you because she gets on my nerves that much now you know jackie interjected because they were getting loud with each other and jackie's like you know she's just like a little you know you like the big sister she's a little sister she's just poking at you like she loves hard but when she's hurt she's hurt really hurt 
But, you know, those two do eventually make up with each other. And Quad just breaks down and starts crying. And then Quad apologized to Toya because she said she read the situation all wrong. Which I felt like she did read the situation wrong. But when it comes down to Toya, you don't know what Toya's going to ask. So, it's a, it's a, I can see both sides. You don't know what Toya's going to ask. And you get why Quad is the way she is. And she's just talking about when she came to the party. She was in a different headspace, which you could clearly see that. But that was the episode. Like the video, leave your comments, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys later.